All right, time to put our track pads back on. I was missing two of them. I did buy the bolts. Um, I didn't know where else to get them. I, they seem kind of like specialty bolts, and I, I know they had these square nuts. Bolts were only like a few cents a piece. I mean, they really weren't very expensive, but boy, the shipping was ridiculous. Uh, but anyway, I have them, so we're gonna put them on. I call these two uh, either 28 or 30. Be all right. Uh, get them in there. And uh, see the other side. I see those are 28 to 30. Let's see where these hook in. These are. That one's actually starting to weep. I'd say that's the same. They, they hook in, hook in underneath. I call them 30, maybe. I better address them sooner rather than later. And I think what I'll do is when I go to replace them, I'll put this bucket up like this, block it up, uh, put a big brace under it, and then I'll do these. This if this boom was down, that'd be just almost an impossibility. That hose is gonna go. Um, so get those. Then I'll start working my way to the back and I'll start worrying about these and those. What else have I got going on here? I'm gonna make all of these. Those are half inch. I can make, I have a hose, we have a hose maker. I'm gonna make those. And these. This one, despite the rusty fittings, actually looks. This one doesn't look bad at all. These two, these two out here look okay. I think I may leave them. We're gonna do the rest of them. Okay, let me do a little homework. All right, I'm getting ready to do some hydraulic hoses here. Um, I'm gonna go old school with the uh, notepad. Rather than try and record things, you got my phone over there, so I have to write things down. Um, you find very little information from John Deere about these hoses. I, I know these are the wrong hoses that were put on it, at least in terms of length. I think the other side has the correct size. Um, you can't even find out whether these are three quarter, five eighths, anything. I think they're three quarter based on what I saw from the rear. Um, I did take one of my connecting hoses off of the backhoe, and this is three quarter. And I know from like, this fortunately has the spec on it, so I know what this is. This is an, uh, an SAE um, 100R2, so at least I know what this is, and I know it's three quarter. Um, I'm pretty sure these are three quarter, but I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, check anyway. So a three quarter fitting should come out to. Um, you know, 0.97 on the calipers, and if this is three quarter, it should come out to 0.97, which it does. So indeed, these are three quarter inch lines, not five eighths. I saw a reference on the John Deere site. You start looking up part numbers, and all they give you is John Deere part numbers, and and the length says make to uh, make to order, or you know, for spec, or or you make it whatever you need, but they don't even tell you. They don't even tell you what the diameter of the hose is, and they are they are three quarter up here. Uh, so everything seems to be three quarter inch hose as far as all the, the main lines for the tilt cylinders for the bucket cylinder the bucket lift. Um, they're all they're all three quarter. So at least, at least I have something to go by. Um, put this back. So I did I did find a reference on the John Deere site to the. Uh, at least on a chat board somewhere that said the, the original hoses on this were 71 and a half and 75 and a half on the length i'm going to go over there uh, i got the string i'm going to go ahead and, and test and see if that's the case uh, i do know the, the cylinder I, the hose i just took off is probably about 42 inches um, i'll need to measure up all the all the rears but the, the hoses on this thing all need to be replaced they're they're, they're all atrocious you can you can tell they're, they're gone um, I'd rather replace them before I have a problem and not once I blow one of them. Um, so we're going to replace them all and uh, get that done. All right, so I'm going to string these up, get measurements, write them down, and then I'm going to be ordering some hoses.
All right, I'm not going to show you every time every measurement I do, but I, I did do the first one. I did this. Uh, I did this lower hose here for the tilt cylinder on on the side that looks like they have original lines, and I wanted to confirm what I read on the chat. Um, so I, I strung it out, and then I, I put a knot when I got to the end uh, of that line, and I can confirm uh, what I read in the chat that said one line was 75 and a half, one was 72 and a half, um, and the upper hose is slightly shorter. So I, I think I'm going to trust those numbers since I verified at least the lower one, and it did come out to uh, pretty much 75 and a half. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and measure up the rest of these, uh, get all my dimensions. I might, uh, well, I might post the whole thing out once I once I know and once I get everything. Um, it might be helpful to somebody else. I, I know this is a major pain for anybody trying to figure this out, at least on a 450. Um, there's just such sparse information out there about the hydraulic lines and how long they are and, and where they go so i'll uh, i'll post out what i learned okay let me get all my measurements all right i was underneath um looking to see if there's any other hydraulic line issues i might want to address it looks like everything under here seems to be okay as far as the lines there's the big main return line i don't see anything you know like super wet or leaking or anything i see a little bit of drips here and there but i i think there's drips coming from everywhere so i'm, I'm not so concerned about it right now at least little ones um, everything seems to be in good shape. However, while I was under here, I did find something. You can see on this side that the undercarriage main bolts here on the on the track frame going up to the uh, top of the track are, are good there. But on this side, there's nothing there. Um, I know these tracks are supposed to float some. Um, so, you know, things aren't supposed to be super tight when, when you put them on. However, I don't think uh, broken off bolts. I did I, in there, they were broken off. And judging by the corrosion that I see and feel in there, I think they were broken off a very long time ago. Um, so I think that's uh, that's going to be fun to try and drill and tap those out. Um, that'll be a project all by itself, trying to figure out how to how best to do that. Um, but something that uh, before I go and put this under heavy use, I want to address. Uh, so we'll get new we'll get new bolts in there. Um, looks like they're just you know standard shoulder bolts so i don't i think probably grade eight uh shoulder bolts so we'll one more thing to do okay so i was trying to get the gauges to work on this machine they weren't working i did i followed my wiring diagrams and i knew from the previous owner he said uh, when he had this all apart doing the clutches and everything that um he had some things off and he had the uh, the hour meter disconnected and I, and I followed the wiring diagrams on the purple wire that goes to all the gauges through the wiring um, the the, uh, the purple wire goes through all the gauges ends up at the hour meter and then goes to ground so I think none of the gauges were getting to ground and in the process of uh, hooking it back up I found the wire and I hooked it up I turned the key on and suddenly I did get some life out of the gauges unfortunately in the process um, I can't start the machine anymore because the fuel solenoid wouldn't open which is the gray wire. Um, I started tracing it down and I think you can't really see it up under there. There's a, a main uh, connector and just in my reaching around something in that connector must have gone bad. I'd started doing some 12 volt testing. I was definitely not getting 12 volts down to the old wire so I, I had a lot of gray wire which is what your solenoid is. So I've rigged up a uh, temporarily permanent um, bypass for the original gray, gray wire, I found that there's a keyed hot on the gray wire already. Um, and I just plugged into it and I did get 12 volts there with key on. So here's our first test. Let me hook the battery up. This will be our, uh, this will be our first test of that wiring. I don't want to be standing on the track. Let's see what happens when I turn the key on. Let's see if this machine will start. So key is going to go on. Key is on. And here's the big test. Let's see if this machine will start right up now. Get that out of the way. Bingo. No problem. I don't really have any lights out of my gate, so.
so the key works again I, I did that bypass the, the problem is definitely in the uh, it's definitely in that in that uh, connector that you can barely see it down there so the gray wire somewhere in that connection is not good because because now I, I certainly have a certainly have a starter and I certainly have a fuel shut off working again <laughs> I'm not getting anything on these gauges of any of any consequence, so I, I can't believe that they're all bad. So I'm 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 wondering if that whole main harness down there for each of these wires is, is maybe shot. Um, hard to get to with the hood on, but I'm I'm gonna guess that since since that was the problem, it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me that the rest of it um, isn't suspect. Um, so we'll, we'll go through it. I. I'm not really at the point where I want to buy all new gauges unless I know for sure that these are, are bad. So I'm going to start doing a little electrical testing, see if I'm getting any kind of voltage to any of these gauges, and I'm, I'm betting I'm not. Um, and I can't, I can't imagine that every single sending unit is bad, so it's probably more of a wiring problem. All right, time to start doing a little diagnostics. <laughs> 